What is your vision for sacred theater? And what's the difference between sacred theater and regular theater? It's a good starting place. Sacred theater in the Greek modality was called therapeia because that was called the work of the gods. Mm. And in that work, people gathered together for conscious evolution through ecstatic attunement mm. rather than entertainment. It was ecstatic attunement and to grow the seeds of consciousness together and to dance and celebrate and go to the highest possible mm. denominator together in consciousness, in ecstasy. They would uh, explore the mythic nature of self mm. through these modalities of sacred theater together. And the ancients knew what modern people have really forgotten, and that is that archetypal energy heals and catalyzes and holes in ways that the mind just simply cannot cognize. Mm. Through ecstasy and through, through ecstasy, joy. Through ecstatic attunement. Ecstatic attunement. Yeah. yeah. Yay. Um, and can you tell me more about uh, mythic? What is myth and what is a mythical being? Myth, as Joseph Campbell defines it, is the opening through which all manifestations, all cultural and artistic manifestations poor. And to me, the simple definition is the bigger story. Mm -hmm. We're here to, you know, move beyond our ego's dramatic line that goes over and over and over again, like all soap operas. Mm -hmm. But in myth, we're here to embody the bigger story of who we are as a soul rather than an ego. That's the essential difference. Yeah. And in these mythic enactments in the sacred um, theater temples in Greece, can you tell me more about what that was um, used for and the purpose of those sacred theaters? Very exciting question. Asclepios in Greece mm -hmm. was a model for this. In Asclepios, they had various temples of preparation. Mm -hmm. In these temples, there would be massage, there would be herbal work, there would be uh, comedians that laughter, they really venerated laughter as being a way to clear consciousness and move into higher states yeah. of consciousness. And they had all those preparatory rings, a dream incub incubation, many different things like that. And then the quintessential experience in Asclepios was you would be summoned in a dream by one of the priests in Asclepios. And when that summoning came, you would get to go to the sacred theater proscenium mm -hmm. that was the center temple in all this work that you'd done to prepare for it. In an entire lifetime, you could only go once. Mm -hmm. And the actors that had been prepared for this work for their whole lives to channel archetypal energy that heals and holds and transforms through ecstasy. Uh, that was the purpose of it. Mm -hmm. So Asclepios is a model that I'd like to recreate now in mm -hmm. this time here in, in our world where yeah. it's be, way beyond what entertainment is. Yeah. So can you say more about how you'd like to bring this vision of sacred theater back into our world now as a form of healing? I'd like to ground this vision in an actual place. I'd mm -hmm. like to create a temple grounds that has mm -hmm. these various uh, preparatory, uh, initiatory chambers for this work to occur in. That, sa that sacred theater is the central issue again because my whole dream in this lifetime is about creating conscious evolution through ecstasy mm. and sacred theater is a medium that can contain and hold archetypal energy that is its nature archetype is there to transform us through ecstasy and that that i don't know whether everyone knows what archetypes are Jung defines archetypes as form constants that exist in and define a field of consciousness that is beyond time, space, or the individual. I look at them as the sacred geometries or sound, light, and color out of which the manifest world mm. condenses. Mm. They are the form behind the manifested form. Uh, we know archetypes in this world, and most people are familiar with archetypes such as the magician, the fool, the empress, um, the mother. Those are archetypes that people are more familiar with, but they are the directing energies 
that are behind in this matrix creating this world that we see here. The Greeks call them gods. The archetypes, were the, the goddess Athena, oh God. the, the god mm -hmm. Zeus, were the archetypes that are actually mm -hmm. guiding and directing the evolution of our soul scripting here on earth. Mm -hmm. That's the cleanest way I can describe what archetypes are. How they function is to assist us in stepping up to being who we are in our expanded essence instead of our small storyline essence of who we think we yeah. are in our little rat mazes that we travel mm -hmm. every day when we learn to express the the greater aspect of who mm -hmm. we are we're embodying an archetype when you meet somebody that is bigger than life you know that they are embodying an archetype mm -hmm. that's that's one of the tip-offs Jim Morrison for example was a high priest Mm -hmm. uh, in the world of archetype, he was delivering the goods as an, a high priest yeah. through his music, through his expression, Jimi Hendrix. Mm. They were archetypes. Yeah. And this is what now our, words, our world now is trivialized into following movie magazines, who the uh, heroes and heroines are now. It's been very trivialized and needs to be up-notched in terms of who are the conscious archetypes that we have for people to learn to venerate and embody in. Who are they? Can you name anybody in the culture mm. that is an archetype that you'd want to have your, your daughter or son embody in their lives? Yeah. I mean, that was the whole point of my writing the 13 Moon Oracle mm -hmm. was to bring to conscious awareness and embodiment mm -hmm. the 13 faces of the divine feminine, of the, the beyond the Barbie doll archetype that our culture says is the only single archetype that there is for women to be yeah. considered to be beautiful in and my intention is to bring the divine archetype forward in all her glory and all her faces in the divine feminine and that's what I'm focused on right now my, I have done a lot of work with the Mayan archetypes in the Mayan Oracle that I wrote but my focus right now because our world is so desperately in need of embodying the divine feminine archetypes my work is with the divine feminine archetypes right now. Yes. So in this sacred theater and in this mythic enactment of archetypal energies, you see a vision of creating places, temples, opportunities to have sacred theater pieces. Absolutely. I see these springing up everywhere. Mm -hmm. I don't see this just as one being place. one yeah. place, but as a new model of yeah. reality right. that is forming for people to come together for a static attunement, right. to yeah. be able to grow the seeds of consciousness mm. together in ecstasy. Mm. That's my dream. And that will come in lots of different forms. My form looks like a Sclapios, but someone else's form, uh, yours, for example, the infinite playground, these things are starting to emerge in consciousness mm -hmm. because people want to have a direct experience of ecstasy that is not just drugged out or stoned out or anything else, but it is coming from the core of essence of who mm -hmm. they are and their expression and joyfulness. Yeah. Mm. So I'm, I wanted to, to get clarity on when these sacred theater pieces, there is no script. The, Good question. Yeah. yeah, there is no script. Uh, as you experienced at Lotus Land when we uh, filmed this, all I did was invite the players, say, arrive at this time at Lotus Land, and if you have an offering, make it. But no, no idea about what that might be or how it might unfold. We walked in the place, and we just let everything unfold mm -hmm. naturally. This is what, what characterizes sacred theater, because in regular theater, everything's scripted and laid out and structured and everything happens in a sequence. And this, in sacred theater, it all completely evolves in the present moment. And one mm -hmm. thing just naturally, organically leads to another. As you saw in that yeah. ceremony, it yeah. was just heart-stoppingly beautiful mm -hmm. because one thing just organically arose is self-organizing mm -hmm. self-arising initiation yeah. ceremonial initiation that happens and that is the nature yeah. of sacred theater yeah. ceremonial